Good afternoon, this is Cody Robert Judy, the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye, prepare ye for the coming of the Lord. I got a word from the Lord and I think probably the most burdensome load from the Lord that a man can receive seriously is a chastisement against women I mean it's like it's like we dread that more than anything there might be a few shepherds out there that agree with me because they've kept their tongue and they refuse but again as I said before it's July 24th 2018 the Lord's chastisement we should count as joy because it gives us a path to get back on without that chastisement you're lost. He's just given right up on you. How does that make you feel? If you, as a child of God, say to yourself, God has just given up on me. Outer darkness is more friendly and so I speak the word of the Lord as he gives to me we got a problem my missies my sisters in Christ there's a problem in Zion there's a problem in your hearts What's that, you say? We have no problem. I'll say that's what you say. But that's not what the Lord says. Here's what the Lord says. Picture a house full of women gabbing away friends having a social hour of community talk all of these are women and there's a couple babies in the room and the babies let out baby farts do all the women flee the house? Do all the women flee the house if a baby farts? No, they don't. But their judgment on men is hypocritical, saith the Lord. I got a couple of scriptures for you. The first one Proverbs chapter 2 verse 16 
to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. How many laws have been passed with the flattering words of strange women against um, men? That's, that's a problem. Reading again in Isaiah chapter 3, starting in verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. They destroy the chastisements of the Lord, which keepeth them on the right path. Verse 13, The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The ones that are led by women. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. Ye that rob God, ye that rob the poor, ye that have no pity upon the orphan or the widow or the divorced, ye that keep your husbands locked up with chains, Ye that won't flee the house when a baby farts, but ye flee the house if a man lights a cigarette up. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces? That is not holding back. What mean ye that ye beat, beat? That's domestic. Beat. Women, beat. My people to pieces. What mean ye that you grind the faces of the poor? Saith the Lord God of hosts. Saith the Lord God of hosts. What mean ye by this? Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tingling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. The Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery, the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets, the ornaments of the legs, the headbands, the tablets, the earrings, the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, the mantles, the whipples, the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink. It's not me talking. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of your perverted judgments, that is the key. Your perverted judgments, your indoor clean act of hell. Your ability to stick your head up a cow's ass looking for gas to pass a law against. And instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of a well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and a burning instead of beauty. The, thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, 
and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. And ye ask me to withhold my chastisement. Please withhold that because you don't give a shit about us when you withhold it, right? But I love you and I'm giving it to you. Straight out from the Lord. Your judgments on men are causing the downfall of Zion. Are you proud of that? Is that something you want to go to the Lord with? No, it is not. Believe me, it's not. You're saying rather than receive an offensive words, we'd rather the devil sink his nails in our tits and hang us from hell for eternity. Is that what you're saying? If that's not what you're saying, and if that's not what you want, you better change your judgments, women. You better quit telling men to put a sock on it. The Lord hears every single word out of your mouth. And your judgments, your judgments on men. Women ought to uphold their men as men. Do you want to marry a woman? Do you want your man to become a woman? Is that what you want? I don't think it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26 and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her The sinner shall be taken by her. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. Her judgments of men are broken. She has consumed her strength. Her judgments have come upon her. What judgments do you want? To come upon you. Proverbs. Here's an example. Chapter 31, starting at verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. What does that mean? No need of spoil. What can it mean? He doesn't need to go out <coughs> and find a hooker. He doesn't need to go out and sneak an affair. Because his woman 
wants him to be a man and upholds him as a man and doesn't tell him to put a sock in it, maybe she goes out and finds a divorcee and says, man, my husband, I love thee. You have no need for spoil. I will provide for you everything that you desire as a man because I love that you are a man. And I know that you will have more respect for me if I treat you as a man and don't make a woman out of you by telling you to put a sock on it. By running out of the house she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth while, also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. She's wise. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She strengthens her man's strength. She's an asset to her man's strength. She's not a hindrance to a man being a man. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She doesn't tell him to put a sock on it. She don't tell him, put a sock on it while I'm bleeding. Have you considered making a man a man? Or do you want to make a man a woman and think that the Lord shall not see it? She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yet she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She considereth her sisters who have less than she, and she doesn't grind the poor's faces and lock them out of her doors, saying, he is mine and no one else's. I will make of him a woman. Is that what you want? And you think that the Lord shall not chastise you, and you think that you shall not be found out she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry or clothing of silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he st st sitteth among the elders of the, la of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto her the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She doesn't defeat her own purpose. And she shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is in the law of kindness. Is putting a sock on it kindness? Is that your kind of kindness to a man? Put a sock on it, honey. Let me embed the nails in my tent so I can hang from hell faster. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he, he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuous, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Who can find a virtuous woman like that in all of Zion? It's a question. It's just a question. Do you think that you are a virtuous woman when you tell a man to put a sock on it? When you make your man a woman? 
Is that virtuous in God's eyes? If it was, I wouldn't be receiving this word. The burden wouldn't be on me. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use un into that which is against nature. Against nature. Changing your man, your husband, into a woman in a violation of the laws of nature and you think there shall be no judgment come unto me. I shall go to the celestial kingdom. You think that. You're out of your rabbit ass fucking minds. The Lord's chastisement is coming. Is here. His judgment is not yet. Ye have a chance to change. The Lord's chastisement never comes. Unless there is hope. And my hope is in you. That you will make your men men. That you will stop this envying, this pride. That you will stop this affliction upon the poor. That you will stop grinding the poor. That your mercy will realize and come to fruit upon your sisters. That was Romans chapter 1, verse 26. Now let's go to 2 Timothy. No, 3 Timothy. No, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Do you think that is just talking about sex? Diverse lusts? Cannot you see the lust in your heart for the things of this world? Cannot you see the lust in your heart for your big, huge houses? Cannot you see the lust in your heart for your husband's bank account? Which you control and which you grind the face of the poor with and say, I have no sin. I have made my man a woman. Really? And do you plug a baby's butt with a cork to keep him from fluffing? And do you run out of the house when a baby farts? Your judgments are the nails of the devil sinking into your private parts to hang you in a fire of lake, a, a lake of fire and brimstone. Do you really think that you shall be perversions, perversions and pervert nature and not receive the chastisements of the Lord before the judgment comes? Now you have received the word. And if you shall not change, you shall defy God, and you shall say, I will test God to see if I shall have the nails of the devil run through my tits, and if I shall hang in the lake of fire, of, uh, fire and brimstone. 
ye say, hell is not that bad. Because you do not know the glory of God. If you knew, as I do, the glory of God, you would be at the pulpit preaching exactly as I am. Because you would fear the Lord. You would tremble at his word as I do. Because I recognize and know power when I see it and when I feel it. Who can find a virtuous woman in all of Zion? Who's not a fraud? Who's not fake? Who's not phony? Who hasn't made a man a woman? Pull your head out of the cow's ass and stop looking for gas. Stop your judgments on baby farts. God has given you so much. He's blessed you with children and blessed you with the love from those children. But when you seek to pervert your men and make them women, what hope does the Lord have to raise a righteous generation in your children? has none. This is Cody Robert, Judy Hill. Talk to you next.